Can everybody see my slides? I can't see anybody. Could somebody give me a yes, verbal? Yes, yes, yes. yes. We yes. See them. <laughs> so I'm Marjorie Cook, and I am a parent of an adult child who um, had behavioral challenges growing up. And um, I got to learn a lot about how to best engage with the professionals involved in our life and what I liked and what I didn't like about it. And in becoming a peer supporter and an advocate for families raising these kiddos, I've kind of um, taken this upon myself to create, um, you know, what, what family engagement should look like and what some are the strategies that we can use to um, better engage families because oftentimes families are not um, interested in engaging with, with the, the professionals in their lives. And there are reasons for that. And there are good reasons for that. So hopefully we're gonna talk about what some of those are. Um, my favorite birds, for any of you that saw me before, um, you know, for a positive, um, whoop, uh oh, something just happened there, let's see. So to positively um, have a positive relationship with the families, we're gonna to have to engage with them. And oftentimes that's gonna require a shift in thinking and acting. So, you know, these birds are talking about what shift means, a change, a transfer, a, a move, a displacement, a budge, um, a turn. So that's what we're talking about here, um, making that shift. Um, I think that starts with believing that families are the experts on what they need. So um, interventions and plans that are made without the direction of the family are destined to fail. And we have data that supports that. Uh, lack of family involvement in the planning and implementation of an intervention accounts for much of the failure of social services on behalf of families. And that's just not okay anymore. So does the family believe um, that you care about them? And can, do they believe you can help them get their needs met? Um, do you refer to that parent um, or that youth by their name? Um, or do you, do you refer to them by their, their um, diagnosis or their charge or offense? Um, or do you just call them mom? Well, mom said this, mom said that. You know, I'm Marjorie, I have a name. Refer to me as Marjorie, please. Um, Listen and react supportively and in a strengths-based manner. Um, we, need to, we need to name the strengths. Families hear a lot about uh, their weaknesses and their challenges. So when we see strengths, we need to actually verbalize them. And then we need to follow through with what we say we're gonna do. Uh, does the family understand, or does the family believe that you understand their situation? Um, you know, do they see you being responsive? Do they, um, are you helping them examine their expectations and are you examining yours? And are you guys talking about that? Um, do you treat the family as an equal partner? Uh, do you validate what they feel and what they think? You know, I often hear families um, or professionals talk about families that repeat the same thing over and over and over again, the same story about how they were done wrong or how this didn't work out. Well, often families are just looking to be validated for somebody to say, I hear what you're saying and that was wrong and it shouldn't have happened that way. Um, be the person that does that. Respect their unique culture and their situation. And does the family believe that you're able to help them? We just talked about validating what they've been through or, or what they're saying. Provide them hope. Um, provide knowledge about the systems by keeping them informed at every step. The person with the most knowledge is really the one with the most power. And if we're gonna talk about having an equal partnership with parents, we have to share that power by sharing that information. Um, provide resources and education as either directed or requested by the parent, not what you think they wanna know or what you think they need to know, but what are they asking to know about? What would they like to hear more about or be more informed about? and empower families, um, give them decision-making roles. So I wanted to talk about some unspoken assumptions about parents that get in the way of effective engagement. Um, you know, oftentimes, you know, parents don't understand the limitations of the system. Um, I'll hear, um, I'll hear professionals say that they don't like me or that, you know, they don't know how to parent effectively. Uh, they don't know how to implement discipline or whatever. They don't care about the child. 
uh, they have mental illness or they have addiction or they have their own developmental issues or whatever. Um, they don't have skills or they don't have the strength in this or they're not committed to their families. And honestly, what, what, what I think is really what I hear most is they don't dot, 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 they won't dot, 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 and they can't dot, dot, dot. None of this is helpful to us, but oftentimes we feel some of these things. So how can we push past that? So let's move past this, all of these assumptions about parents, and let's work on effectively engaging them because we know we're going to get a better outcome for our youth if we can engage the family in the process. So I like to talk about being aware of who's walking through the door and what their reality is. Um, it's just kind of flipping over what we talked about um, when we were talking about some of those assumptions. It's, you know, oftentimes parents are unfamiliar with the process, so we don't know how to engage in it, or we don't know what we don't know. Um, we're often overwhelmed with our situation. Many of us start getting some help or people involved when we're in crisis mode. We don't look the same as we do when we're, you know, healthy and strong and, and not in the middle of a crisis. Um, sometimes we're intimidated by you because you're professionals and you have so much knowledge and so much power. Um, sometimes we or our, our, our youth have an attitude. We may, have, we may have a right to that attitude and it, there may be a good reason for it, but work with us because we can overcome it and we can change it. And you guys are part of helping us to do that. Uh, professionals speak different languages, systems speak different languages. We don't understand the alphabet soup. So we're gonna have to have somebody explain the ABCs and the XYZs to us. And take the time to do that because when you inform us, you're empowering us. Um, and as I said, you're seeing us at one of the worst times in our lives oftentimes because we're in crisis. So let's talk about more strategies to engage families to get through these crises. Build a partnership um, to effectively assess and work with families. You'll need to develop, to develop a positive working relationship. This is known as engagement. It means you have to be accepting, non-judgmental. You need to build a rapport, and then you should establish clear roles and boundaries. I say just talk about it. You know, there's going to be unspoken assumptions on both parts. So let's just have a, a meeting where we talk about expectations, but not just about your expectations for me as the parent, but ask me as the parent, what are my expectations from you? You know, that collaboration um, requires a caring, non-blaming attitude toward one another to share information. I'm going to keep talking about that sharing information because that, that power that isn't equal creates a big problem in our relationships with each other, parents and professionals. So we've got to find a way to balance that scale, that power. Um, recognize the family as the key resource. Uh, recognition of the limits and the existence of the responsibilities that we have. You know, there are usually other kids, there could be significant others. Um, we, we may work, we may have our own challenges. And, in, and there's a way to talk about those things without being judgmental or blaming and, and just accepting that this is, you know, some of what we're going to have to deal with and what that looks like and make accommodations for us. That, you know, when we're talking about what those limits are, help us figure out what the right accommodation is so that we don't feel like you're judging us or blaming us. Um, know the barriers. Um, you know, parents have barriers with continued contact because of, you know, maybe they didn't get to pay their cell phone bill. Maybe they don't have bus money. Maybe they don't have transportation. They can't afford an Uber. Maybe it takes you three hours to take public transportation from one side of town to the other. Uh, there are lots of challenges. Um, other children, we talked about balancing work demands, other appointments, blame, shame, lack of support, loss of hope, loss of trust, and I'm sure you could all add a couple more things to this. Just know them. Go ahead and, and add those ands and know what they are when you're working with your families. 
And then the golden rule, treat others the way you want to be treated. You know, what would you want to know? If, you, if this was your kid, what would you want to know? What would you want to hear? Um, how would you want to be approached about this situation? Um, none of us would want to be blamed or shamed, but often that's a parent's experience. Um, how would you want to be spoken to or listened to? Um, would you want to hear about your options and explore those options and have a say in what the, what the decision is? Or do you want that decision to be made for you already? I know the answer. You know the answer. But we don't often think of it when we're dealing with parents because it's so clear to us, well, this is what you need to do. But it's not always clear to the parents. So help them explore those options. I also think it's helpful to define what your role is not. You know, you're not an expert on their youth. You are not the decision maker for their family. And you're not there to save the family. Don't put a family in that lower position by, by assuming that you're there to save them or give them what they need to be successful. That's a bad place to be as a parent. And to find what your role is. Um, you're there to support them, provide information, model for them what partnerships look like, how to build a collaborative relationship, how to choose your battles, um, some thoughtful planning to address behaviors. Um, and then whatever else your role is, because each of you have different roles that you play. So go ahead and, and define what your role is to the family. Again, knowledge is power. Um, you've got to share that power. Uh, if we don't share the power, Parents are going to have this continued struggle of trying to get some power or feel like you're holding power over their heads. So include the youth and the family in all planning that you can. Um, this will increase the likelihood that they're going to follow through and it'll increase their ownership. They'll take ownership of what this is, is and the outcomes that are going to come from it. They can be part of the solution or they can be part of the problem. We don't want to forget about values and culture when you're engaging with a family. So we have to definitely consider their family's culture. And that, you know, is, it, it encompasses more than just um, their ethnicity or, you know, what foods they eat or their religion. You know, it really encompasses communication, values, beliefs, attitudes, ideals, morals, codes, traditions, of course, their religion, their food, their social habits, music, art, dress, behaviors their social interactions, their environment that they live in. And it, it empowers them and bonds them together as a family when they have that shared family culture. Um, so how does your agency or how do you um, align with the family's culture? I think you need to be aware of that. Some of us don't have experience and really struggle to understand some cultures. Um, that's okay. That doesn't mean we can't work effectively. We can respect it and we can acknowledge it, and we can know that that's something that's going on within ourselves that we may have to work a little harder at. Identify the family's strengths and resources. And, and I talked about examining your own culture. You know, what does a functional family look like to you? You know, what things do you bring from your family culture to your job or to who you are as a person? Um, and what might you need to change to better interact with this family? Sometimes there are challenges that we have to look at and um, examine in ourselves. So learn and respect what families know, what they think, what they feel, and what they believe about their children and about the services and supports that they're receiving. This will save you a lot of time in suggesting interventions that maybe don't fit with their beliefs, don't fit with their culture, or that they don't think are gonna work because if we don't have their buy-in, it's not gonna be implemented properly and we're not gonna be able to um, get the outcomes that we all want to see these kids doing better. Communication basics, let's talk about body language. Um, you know, we all know when we're talking with somebody who has their arms folded in front of them and, um, you know, kind of gives a, a, an attitude of leave me alone, they're not open. Um, examine your body language, you know, it, it, examine that families know how to get a hold of you. It, examine that um, 
You know, if you say you're going to do something, do you follow through? If you say, I'm going to call you tomorrow before noon, do you call tomorrow before noon? I often hear parents say that the follow through doesn't exist as they're being told, that they might be told, well, I'll get to you by the end of the week, but it'll be Monday before the people get back with them. Or, I'm, or they're told, well, I'll get to you by noon tomorrow, but they call at three and say, well, sorry, I had an emergency and I couldn't get with you. And that this happens over and over again. And that kind of you know, erodes some of the trust and the partnership that you're trying to build when you're not following through. Um, be willing to listen to the family and respond honestly, positively, and respectfully. Clearly state your expectations. Um, identify goals with the family, not for them. Get their input, get, get their buy-in, get their expertise. They are the experts on their child. Um, and take time to listen. Take time to answer their questions, even if that means that you answered the same questions last week when you met with them or last month when you met with them. Sometimes we're so overwhelmed with everything coming at us that we only remember bits and pieces or we remember what we think we remember, but maybe we're remembering pieces and parts that don't make sense to us. So we're asking again, please give us the courtesy of just reviewing that with us again. So commu some communication tips, uh, make eye contact, listen, value any information that the family provides you, see the family as an equal partner, use strengths-based language, consistently clarify your roles and expectations, not in a shaming or demeaning way, but in a way to get feedback. Am I doing what I'm hoping that I'm doing for you? Talk to me about, you know, my expectations, are they realistic? Are, are your expectations realistic? Are we meeting our goals with, that we have for each other in this relationship, in this partnership that we're forming? Um, make times, locations, and meetings at the family's convenience and return calls in a family member. I'm sorry, in a, in a timely manner. Um, communication tips of what not to do. Don't disregard the family, their culture, their concern. Don't judge them. Don't use system jargon. Please don't use your ABCs, but use, use your words so that we can understand in layman's terms what you mean. Even if you've heard us use the same term, sometimes we use it and we're using it incorrectly. Been in meetings where parents thought it meant something totally different than it did because they just picked up on the way it was being used and thought they understood it. Um, don't talk over the family or around them. Try to avoid any negative statements or deficit-based languages. And don't give orders to parents. Don't tell them what to do. Take time to form opinions about the family. Be direct. Um, trust the family's instincts. Speak language that they understand. View families as a whole. You know, not, not a case, not a, a, a diagnosis. Um, not, a, not a, a juvenile justice charge, um, assist families with life plans, not with treatment plans, but with life plans, um, involve families at every level of planning, and not just for their own families, but, but for even families that are in that same organization, get their input. In, we have a lot of good information to help ourselves and our own families, but also to help the families coming after us accept that there are lifestyle and cultural differences, keep the family informed. Again, I don't think that I can say that enough. Again, sharing the power really creates that partnership that we talk about. If there's, if, if there's not that power isn't shared equally, then somebody has more power and they have, they can use that or we can feel that it's being used against us. We feel like it's being held over our heads. Even if you're not actively doing that, it feels that way because we know we don't have the same power that you do. Um, keep private lives private. Please don't ever let us hear you talking about something we shared in confidence to somebody else. Even if it's not a HIPAA or a FERPA violation, just we don't want to hear that. It, it, it's, it leaves us feeling like we can't trust you. Um, respect family schedules, 
be accessible and be open to the family's ideas. I think I've talked about following through, being a partner, respecting privacy. These just keep coming up over and over and over again um, in, in conversations with parents that I work with in my own life experience when I was going through this with my own child. Um, don't allow yourself to have preconceptions of a parent's background, good or bad. Just don't, just don't have those preconceptions. Um, don't talk down and don't become another layer, layer of bureaucracy. So in concluding here, family engagement is vital to the success of youth and it's achieved through understanding and respecting the family's culture, their experience and their situation by clarifying roles and expectations, by being positive and honest in both your verbal and your nonverbal communications, and letting go of assumptions and misperceptions about families, following through, um, be yourself, do trust people, create, collaborate, um, all the wonderful things that you guys are already doing. Just maybe shift your thinking a little and look at parents through a different lens. And thank you for allowing me to share about family engagement strategies.